I'd like to introduce Council Member Jeff Okrecki, who will introduce the first category. Here you are, Jeff. It's all warmed up for you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, the first award is for the cultural enrichment category, which recognizes those who have worked to enrich the artistic and historic culture of Santa Rosa, which is extremely, uh, I love this, this mood music we have going. <laughs> Um, which is important uh, to our community to uphold our cultural um, and, and uh, uh, historical uh, relevance so that we're not just some, you know, plain, boring, old community. This is very important and we're really excited to honor these and I believe Grace will do the honors of introducing our first awardee. Good evening. Can you hear me? This is, this is. Hi, everyone. Welcome. <laughs> Woo. Our first merit award recipient of the night is Spring Maxfield. Spring, please join the mayor up the front. Stand over there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're the, you're the first one, so you'll be modeling how it's going to go. So when we ask... This registered national, state, and city historic landmark is a unique urban garden located at the corner of Santa Rosa and Sonoma Avenues in Santa Rosa. 135 volunteers share their love of history and are gardening with visitors from all over the country and the world. 
Volunteers work as docents for the house and garden, as well as helping to maintain the garden and work in the gift shop. They provide hundreds of hours each year. They greet visitors from all over the world and provide educational and fun tours for young students. Volunteers work between 63 and 72 hours annually. They curate the museum, house in the gift shop, help in the gardens, staff the gift shop, and organize special events such as the recent Midsummer Tea and the annual holiday open house where there are crafts for kids, cider, and cookies, and the chance to see the house decorated in true Victorian style. And personally for me, that's the true start of the holiday season. A new endeavor is the quarterly garden blitz where the community is invited to come and help with intensive garden cleanup. I'm honored to present or have the mayor present a 2024 Merit Award to the Luther Burbank Home and Garden Volunteers. So with that, I would like to introduce Mark Stapp who will announce that I'm sorry, Vice Mayor Mark Stapp, I can't forget your title, Mark, uh, who will announce the next category. Karen, thank you very much. This is an honor. The Environmental and Sustainability category of the American Awards honors those in our community who work hard to protect our environment, including our open spaces and native species, and who help to promote sustainability. And it goes without saying in this county that anybody who wins an Environmental Sustainability Award is really punching above his or her weight. This is so central to our community's ethos. Uh, and I, I, we know who the award is, any of you with a, with a program. Um, and I should say that I'm proud to be a board member of the Russian River Watershed Association. So very much on a personal level, I want to thank Aaron for all his work. And with that, I will turn it over to former Santa Rosa City Council member, John Sawyer, to do the official and mayor to the official introduction. <laughs> Jim, come on up. Thank you all, and thanks for being here tonight. It's really important that the community support these great volunteers, and it's a great turnout tonight. Thank you. Please welcome Erin Boyce, our next Merit Award recipient. I believe all of us who visit any of our many miles of creeks in Santa Rosa have seen a plastic bottle or some other piece of trash submerged or floating by and said to themselves, wow, too bad there isn't a way to clean up our creeks. Well, one important answer to that question is with us tonight. I am honored to introduce to you, and already standing here today, a very important creek steward, Aaron Boyce. His mission started around 2017 when he noticed a woman removing trash from Santa Rosa Creek during a bike ride on the Santa Rosa Mo or the Prince Memorial Greenway. Although he was quite impressed with her dedication, it didn't stop there. He exchanged contact information and found she was a member of the Clean River Alliance. This spurred his lifelong respect for Santa Rosa Creek to become a part of the solution to those disrespecting our vital waterways and was bitten by the volunteer high. As a Santa Rosa native, his deep civic pride had found a home. In an article by Michael Vigna of North Bay Biz, Aaron said, I was taught from a young age that trash was bad. I have the pack it in, pack it out mentality. Luckily, Aaron is not alone in his efforts. He hates looking at trash. He says, I feel it is my duty to clean up for animals and everyone to enjoy. Aaron is a humble man with, with a mission to improve the quality of life for everyone living in Santa Rosa who enjoys our vast Sonoma County watershed. Santa Rosa Creek flows 22 miles from the Mayaconas Mountains to the Laguna de Santa Rosa. How lucky we are to have this modest, dedicated native Santa Rosan to help preserve the quality of our beloved Santa Rosa Creeks. Ladies and gentlemen, please acknowledge Mr. Bar Aaron Boyce as he receives his Santa Rosa Merit Award. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Th 
Thanks, Aaron. Good job. <laughs> I'd like to introduce Council Member Victoria Fleming, who will announce the next category. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you all for coming out today. The category that I'm introducing today is near and dear to me. It's uh, so serving others. And serving others category recognizes groups and individuals for their contribution toward improving the lives of others in Santa Rosa, especially young people, seniors, and those in need. And you know, I've been a social worker for 20 years, and one of the things that I think is that none of us gets in or out of this life without a helping hand from someone else, as much as we'd like to think we're self-sufficient. And, um, you know, we tend to think of all the benefit that other people need from us, but really that's what makes us human is to give and to receive care. So um, I left my sheet of who's introducing <laughs> over there. So I'll turn the page and see if I can. It is not there. Can I introduce to you? It's still not on, on this, this, this one. No, it's XXX. Um, you know, oh, okay. Carolina Spence couldn't be a better person to introduce this award. Well, I get the really fun one. Please meet Cannon Myers. Cannon. <laughs> I told you, I get the really fun ones. Here's a young man that you want to meet. If you're a cookie-loving person, he's your guy. Cannon is a sophomore in high school. He has always dedicated his time, starting at age seven. For the past 10 years, he has raised over $30,000 for kids and families in need through the Secret Santa program. That's a holiday. <laughs> You are a good crowd. That's a holiday event run by the, the Center of, for Volunteer and Nonprofit Leadership. So here's how that goes. Cannon's sidewalk cider and cookie stand was born 10 years ago, and he's blossomed into something much bigger and sweeter. Today, dozens of sugar and spice molasses cookies will be made and sold outside of Cannon's home. His mom, Amy Myers, <laughs> is a superior baker, so she bakes the cookies. They're being served along with hot apple cider. Between the two of them, they are striving to make $10,000 this year for 10, <laughs> for 10 years. This will cover 150 to 200 wishes. From this money, then Cannon goes, takes the secret Santa hearts and goes shopping. He shops for all ages and needs. And along with their online page, people can contribute to the Secret Santa program. And any money that people give at the cookie stand, Cannon takes the hearts and goes shopping. Cannon's weekends, write this down now. Cannon's weekends are going to be December 7th and 8th, and December 14th and 15th. The stand is open from 11 to 6. It all started with one young man wanting to share his gifts. A big holiday thanks to you, Cannon.
please welcome our next Merit Award recipient, Leah Carroll. Come on up, Leah. <laughs> When Leah was only 12, she began as a junior volunteer at the Charles M. Schultz Museum. As a junior volunteer, she helped preschool age kids with art experiences, and five years later, she's still at it. She enjoys working with the children and making personal connections. She has even babysat for some of them. Leah is a senior at Montgomery High School, and she's also a regular and consistent volunteer with multiple organizations through the Interact Club at Montgomery. This year, she is a community service director. At school, she organizes drives and helps with Special Olympics, coordinates Secret Santa's programs, volunteers with campus beautification efforts, and on top of that, she has volunteered at Brook Hill Elementary School, where she gave her time to help at their annual fundraiser, the Forgive Me Not Arms, where she volunteered to clean and provide maintenance and with Best Buddies, where she cooked with special needs students, the run for Alzheimer's, and multiple creeks and park cleanup days. She says, I just enjoy helping people and bettering our community. All this, and she's only 17. I want to introduce you to Minerva Haddad. Please come up. Please join us. Minerva, please join us at the front of the room. Minerva worked. <laughs> Minerva worked for 11 years before retiring as an administrative assistant in the Sonoma County Office of Education School Leadership Academy. She had learned to meet years ago from her mother. After a year of retirement, she volunteered as a front desk receptionist at Kaiser Permanente. This is her 23rd year of volunteering there. At Kaiser, she observed children in the emergency department were sometimes scared and nervous. Minerva has been laying teddy bears for 18 years and donating them to the ER for doctors and nurses to calm the children's nerves. In 2022, she also volunteered at Center Hospital as a front desk receptionist and continues to do so. She also provides teddy bears to children in the emergency department at Center. Minerva continues to volunteer at both hospitals. She estimates she has made and given away for free more than 4,550 teddy bears over the years. <laughs> Minerva, Minerva sees, her, sees her volunteerism as a ministry. Quote, I'm doing something that makes the children's lives better when they are in trauma. My goal is to p make people smile, laugh, or hug. That is my way of making a difference, end quote. Thank you, Minerva, for 23 years of volunteering. Please welcome our next Merit Award recipient, Tracy Hinman. I'm pretty sure there are a number of people in this room who needed medical equipment for an ill friend or family member. Then when the equipment is no longer needed, the question comes up, what do we do with it now? Well, I have a solution to that problem. Call Tracy Hinman at the Medical Equipment Recycle, Recycling Program, known as MERP. 
What a brilliant concept run by dedicated volunteers, led by the very hardworking and multi-talented Ms. Henman. With the expert help of those great volunteers, she handles the volunteer schedule, program site, website, inventory, and marketing. A major challenge appeared fairly recently when the program lost its site on Dutton Avenue. Tracy moved heaven and earth to find a new home for this vital service. MERP is now located on Standish Avenue. Due to the generosity of, of a special benefactor, they will never again have to move from their new location. Chris Thwaites, one of Tracy's star volunteers, whose official title is Equipment Coordinator, put into a nutshell the mission of MERP. We hand out wheelchairs and occasional hugs, he said. Whether leaving equipment or needing some, for many, it can be a very emotional time, he said. People will show up with a carload of stuff that was there, or <clears throat> and you know that they were cleaning out a room of their late husband or their father's, or it was their wife. MERP places recommended prices on their equipment that it is not required and no one is turned away for lack of funds. This policy will occasionally bring tears to desperate ones in need with little funds. The simple idea behind MERP is to help people in that moment of need and then take, take in the equipment and supplies when they are no longer being used so that someone else may benefit from, benefit from them. The program serves an average of 80 people each Wednesday. I would like to thank PD columnist Carrie Benefield for her special co contributions to this presentation. In fact, her piece in the Press Democrat really caught the attention of many people who didn't know that MERP existed. In addition to the medical equipment recycling program, Tracy volunteers for local theaters to help with their various needs. Tracy also plays piano and sings show tunes with, the, with seniors at their care homes. Tonight, we're singing her praises and presenting her with a, her well-earned Santa Rosa Merit Award. Thank you and congratulations, Tracy Hinman. Your, your Merit Award awaits. Pleasure to introduce Council Member Diana McDonald um, to announce the next category. Thanks, Diana. Thank you, John. I appreciate that so much. So I get the pleasure of announcing the next thing, uh, Strengthening Neighborhoods. But first, I would just want to say, Cannon, will you please email the City Council list so that we can buy cookies from you? Um, I love cookies so much, but I think we need to buy them for the city of Santa Rosa for some type of big thing. That's such a great cause, so thank you for all that you're doing, everybody here tonight. It's an honor to be here with all of you. So the Strengthening Neighborhoods category recognizes those who strengthen and enrich our neighborhoods, making them more connected, resilient, and enjoyable for all residents. And I believe that... Grace is going to be announcing the next people, but I just want to say something really quick. These two people inspired me after 30 years to buy a new bike to be able to participate in what they're doing in our community. So I hope to see you out there. That's cool. Please welcome. It's happening. Please welcome our next Merit Award recipients, the dynamic duo Chad Hunt and Ron Shuttles. <laughs> Once upon a time in Santa Rosa, two dads who enjoyed riding bikes with their sons met and decided to start riding together. This foursome invited anyone and everyone to join, and their fun ride has evolved into the weekly Taco Tuesday ride, which brings together more than 300 folks on their bicycles to ride together. The riders cruise throughout our town on Tuesday evenings and include tacos. 
Juan Chavez and Chad Hunt are the dads, and they have unexpectedly and organically given our community a weekly parade that not only brings all kinds of people together, but encourages people to show their creativity and uniqueness with their highly decorated and brightly lit bicycles. This weekly ride is a time when folks can take the time to enjoy being in the moment for a few hours and experience community, taking care of and supporting one another. They emphasize that no rider is left behind and everyone looks out for each other's safety. Specific riders in the group will hold traffic so that riders can safely cross streets. When riders or their families have hardships, the group comes together to support them and give them good wishes and encouragement. People often meet for the first time one week and then greet each other like old friends the next week. Juan says some of his favorite moments are when they stop at Matote Park, their halfway point, and riders who have just met at the beginning of the ride will eat together and have focused conversations without phones or worries. Riders benefit from the Taco Tuesday rides and the neighborhoods and communities they roll through as well. Neighbors regularly enjoy the bicycle parade of rolling lights and smiling riders, and they wave to them from their porches. There are also themed rides, such as Greece on September 17. It's tomorrow. <laughs> this group collaborates with other bicycle groups, such as Bikeable Santa Rosa, which helped secure the parking lot at the SRJC, where the ride begins and ends. Taco Tuesdays was recently featured on the TV show American Dream, highlighting their sense of community. Taco Tuesday has become an amazing entity with a life of its own. Chad Hunt and Juan Chavez truly embody the Santa Rosa spirit of community. Woohoo! <laughs> I want to invite Council Member Jeff Okrepke back up to the podium to announce the final category. Thank you very much. Uh, our next category and <laughs> All right. Our next and final category is the Community Heroes category, which recognizes those individuals who rose to a challenge, offering their courage, strength, and self-sacrifice in service to this community. And uh, this category reminds me of something uh, Muhammad Ali once said, which is service to others is the rent you pay for your room here on earth. And I think the, the people that are being honored tonight really uh, embody that. So uh, Diane, if you would come up and introduce our first awardee. First of all. <laughs> I am honored to introduce Joshua Carroll, the volunteer coach. <laughs> the volunteer coach of the wheelchair basketball team. Joshua became passionate about the sport of wheelchair basketball after receiving an injury to his spinal cord. Joshua won the game after the injury and fell in love with the sport. He then continued playing and getting better, ultimately reaching a professional skill level, which enabled him to travel across the country and play the sport. Later, he then took several coaching classes online. Through wheelchair basketball, he gained confidence, a community of support, and a change of perspective. Sonora Rocks, a small nonprofit under Disability Services Legal Center, was created in 2021 when it received a grant of $10,000 from the Community Foundation to purchase three specially equipped wheelchairs to enable kids with various disabilities to play wheelchair basketball. Through additional fundraising, the team now has 13 specially equipped wheelchairs. When the special wheelchairs...
Now, with special wheelchairs arrived, the Sonoma Hawks looked for a volunteer coach and found Joshua. The team consists of eight to 10 kids with various disabilities and backgrounds, ranging in age from five to 18. They have been playing at Santa Rosa High School Gymnasium when it's available. Joshua individualizes information, connects with each player, and is inspired by their potential. The kids come from several schools, so when they play wheelchair basketball together, they get to know each other and become part of the disabled community. We are pleased to give Joshua a Santa Rosa Merit Award for being a community hero. I'd like to thank the Sonoma Hawks. I'd like to want to thank the Sonoma Hawks who are up there with Joshua. Thank you. This is our final recipient. The time goes so quickly. So, do you want me to talk really slowly? <laughs> I, I can do that. Please meet our last recipient, Bill Montgomery. Come on down, Bill. There we go. If you don't know Bill, I bet you've seen him around. He's in the parks, history tour, he's the driver of Rosie the Trolley, and other outdoor volunteer activities. His reliability and charisma naturally draw others into his love of community engagement. Bill is the founder of the Rural Cemetery Preservation Committee. That is a long title, Bill and serves as a liaison to the city. His, runs, his responsibilities include presentation to city, boards, community or organizations, overseeing volunteer cemetery maintenance, participating in acting, directing tours, leading monthly meetings, fundraising, and various other tasks that are essential to the mission to preserve and maintain the rural cemetery. He obviously doesn't sleep at all. <laughs> the group also nurtures trees, heritage roses, and, and promotes the care of California native plants and trees. Bill is the driving force behind the Rural Cemetery Preservation Committee. It's, it is dedicated to conserving, safeguarding, and preserving the local cemetery. Some of the ways they do this is through educational tours and events. And he has organized hysterical, hysterical and historical <laughs> tours, educational programs, created map, maps, and restored tombstones and pathways. Bill also volunteers, just in case you thought he slept any, for the Bennett Valley Vision and the Friends of Prince Memorial Greenway groups. <laughs> which are dedicated for maintaining and clearing Santa Rosa green space. Now that you have met Bill and seen and heard about him, I'm sure you'll see him everywhere. Thank you, Bill. Everybody take, pay attention to Bill and go have your picture taken. There you go.
That's great. Scrunch all up together. So, as you heard earlier during the mayor's opening remarks, the Merit Award event honors extraordinary individuals, organizations for their volunteerism in serving our community and the quality of life in Santa Rosa. Give yourselves a big hand. I want to thank the mayor, the vice mayor, city council members for joining us tonight to honor our Merit Award recipients. Thank you to my fellow Merit Award committee members. We've gotten to know each other really well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> thank you to the awardees for your volunteer service. And may your volunteerism inspire others in the community. And you know I'm going to tell everybody I know about this, so watch out. So I invite you all to stick around, take some pictures, get to know each other. There's some cookies on the back table. And thank you for coming, everyone. See you next year.